how and why do solutions form? That's what I'm gonna go over in this video. If you'd like a copy of these blank three pages that I'm gonna go over, go to the YouTube description below and print off my solution notes, which are part of a larger set of notes for all the solution videos I have on my YouTube channel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the definitions of solution, solute, and solvent, some examples, including all specific types with gases, liquids, and solids. We're gonna talk about why will the solution form and how to kind of predict it. And last but not least, we're gonna go over the steps to how a solution is formed, and we're gonna do some particulate modeling, and I'd like you to draw those in those spots. All right, so again, if you'd like a copy of these three blank documents, they are in the YouTube description below called Solution Notes, and again, they're part of a larger set of notes that I have for all of my solution videos. Let's go. So if you'd like to pause the video to write this down first, I'll just give you a second. All right, so let's get going. So solutions are homogeneous mixtures. That means it has to contain at least two different particles. That's the good example I have right here. And they'll be uniformly distributed with the solute and the solvent. So from your, you know, your eyes can't really tell um, there's any difference and that's why it'd be homogeneous. The smaller quantity in a solution is the solute and it's what's being dissolved. And then the larger quantity is the solvent and it kind of does the dissolving is what most people say. All right, so what are some specific types? So air is a great example of a gas and gas um, type of solution with oxygen and then mostly nitrogen. Gases and liquids, carbonated water is probably a, a pretty good example because if you have it carbonated, it stays carbonated at least for a while. The CO2 is the least you know, amount, which is the solute, and then water is the solvent. All right, now those two actually won't stay dissolved, which we'll talk about in you know, why will solutions form or not. Liquid and liquid, something like vinegar that you have in your house, which is acetic acid and water. Seawater is a great example of the most common type of solution everybody thinks about, which is solids and liquids. So that's taking like sodium chloride solid and putting it in water. Last but not least, don't forget solids and solids count. So something like brass that's made of a little bit of zinc and mostly copper is also a solution. All right, next, what about will it form? Okay, so kind of go back to a little bit to Vesper theory. So you have to be able to predict the polarity of a molecule. So these, these two are polar molecules. This is methanol, and then this is, let's say, hydrofluoric acid, which I talked about in the other part of another video I made with solutions. And if they're both polar, they will dissolve. Now, if you take something that's uh, polar, let's say you take that, and then you try to dissolve it in uh, maybe methane or carbon tetrachloride or CO2, those are nonpolar molecules, and then that solution will not form. All right. Next is what about if we put nonpolars together? Um, chemists have found that if you put nonpolar molecules together, which are all sym symmetrical, they will dissolve, but again, if you keep one of these nonpolar molecules and you try to have it uh, dissolve with a polar molecule, the solution didn't form. Last but not least, if you take things that are ionic, and we're gonna talk about this next, is what if I have permanent, or what I call um, net positive and negative ions, okay? And then I take something that's polar, like these little magnetic water molecules I have, and what they found is that ionic things and polar things do interact. You can kind of watch how this interacts like that. And so the solution did form. But if I try to put something ionic, let's say this, with something that's polar, then the solution did not form, or even like CO2, okay? So again, remember your molecules that are symmetrical are, um, that's the fastest way to decide if it is nonpolar. And your unsymmetrical, or they lack symmetry, are your uh, polar molecules, all right? That's the shortcut. But really, you should go through what is called vector analysis to prove it. All right, next, let's go on to a summary. So what is the summary of this? So particles have to have an attraction, and then the, the, the lack of attraction is kind of about these two, so I'm just gonna kind of skip that right now. So I'm just gonna read this more about the polar with polar and ionic with polar, that they um, interact because they have ions with either a net positive and negative charge, and they interact with these partially positive and negative ends. So let me grab these two back here. So you can kind of see the interaction going on here uh, with that one, and let's do that. And water could also interact with itself, as you can see, so two polar things could interact. And that's because they have a partially positive and negative end that's permanent. Now, molecules that are not polar, like these, they do not have a permanent partially positive and negative end, so they almost like lack attraction. So then they'll form a solution with each other because they have, um, they don't have any positive or negative charges, and they, they really can't get any interaction with, with these polar molecules or ions 
because something that's nonpolar, it's almost like it gets pushed out. It's almost like it gets bullied out and it doesn't let the solution form. All right, but again, polar molecules are going to be our um, lack of symmetry, and then our ions are kind of the easy one with a metal and non-metal um, ion. Okay, so that's what I'm going to go in, into next is how about, what about the steps involved in a solution form? So like, why does it form in the first place? So this is will it, okay? But then I love this one. This is why, why does it form? Okay, so what you want to do is kind of start out with your little particle drawing. So here's my water here, here's there. But what I need to do is step one and two are separating these so that we can pull them apart so they could interact. Because you're watching me do that with my hands. So just imagine if the molecules had to do that. So step one is to pull apart that crystal lattice if it's an ionic compound. Or if you had a bunch of like methanol molecules, you have to separate the molecule from each other. I wish I had another one of these. But you have to pull that molecule away from another methanol molecule so that it can interact. And that's what are called intermolecular forces. But we're going to see that with our water. So if you look at my waters here, I have to pull those kind of apart from each other so that they can interact now with the solute. So then the third step, I'll just kind of leave it like that. The third step is going to be saying, okay, well, now they can interact. And so what's going to happen, let's do a few of these around it. This is called the hydration step. And this is an exothermic step. So this is endothermic, endothermic, exothermic in terms of energy um, or what's called enthalpy. So these are going to be attracted to water kind of like this. I'm just going to kind of draw it so that you can see. I'll just kind of flip it like that, kind of maybe push it up a little bit. And there will be more, but I want you to be able to see the ions that are being surrounded, and they're called hydrated um, by the water molecules. Again, with the positive, positive end of the water facing the negative end of the chloride, and then the negative end of the water facing the positive sodium. So those are kind of your pictures again. One of them kind of got in here, didn't it? So let's kind of slide that one back up here. So, if, you know, let me go back here. So first we have to pull these apart. That's endothermic separate these away from each other's, remove those IMFs, that's endothermic, remember the molecules are staying intact, and then they can help themselves. Then, then they come near each other, they can interact and form um, a hydrated solution. Get that one like that, perfect. All right, so again, I hope that helped you understand, again, the steps of formation, and will it form, and kind of how to predict it if you have to, and then a solution formation, just some terms and some examples. And again, if you'd like a copy of these blank set of tables and notes, go to the YouTube description below. And they're part of a larger group of notes that go with all the solution videos I have on my YouTube channel. All right, good luck, chemists.